Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video after a little bit of a break. Sorry about that. I'm back now. So in this one, I'd like to discuss a little bit about how can one tell if they have asthma? How can you tell if you are asthmatic? This was the question that I received on the channel. It's a fantastic question. Obviously, in this video, I cannot cover everything. So if you are worried about anything related to your health, you should see your doctor and just ask for an opinion as it applies to your particular medical history, to your particular case. In this video, however, I'm just going to cover a few things that you should know and that may make you think that you have asthma. And I think if you have these things, it would probably warrant to have an opinion from your doctor. Now, obviously, just covering asthma in its entirety is very difficult because there are different types of asthma. So most people associate asthma with these uh, symptoms that you get when you're trying to breathe and you're wheezing, your chest is tight, you can't get the air out. So you're making a bit of a sound, you're wheezing, you're, you're making this type of sound when you're trying to breathe out, your chest is tight, you're panicking a bit because you can't breathe. And these episodes can come and go. And when these episodes come, we tend to call them asthma attacks. So this is something most commonly associated with asthma. However, that's not the full picture. Some people do not have these symptoms. Some people may have asthma, but they have what is called cough variant asthma. So when you have cough variant asthma, you're basically not getting the full blown asthma attacks, but you're getting a lot of coughing. And this can come and go. As, as it is with normal asthma attacks, you can have attacks of coughing. Or you may have a bit of a cough that keeps going, sometimes as a background, but sometimes it intensifies a little bit, you have more coughing, it goes down a little bit. Also, there is exercise-induced asthma. This is another subtype of asthma that you may have heard of. This is when people do not normally get asthma attacks, they are absolutely fine, their breathing is absolutely fine, but then they go for a run, for jogging, for, I don't know, mountain climbing, and at some point after they stop their exercise, they start to get wheezy, chest tightness sets in, you're having trouble breathing. So this is something triggered by the exercise. So this is something called exercise-induced asthma. It's a subtype of asthma. There may also be occupational asthma. So this is when people may get breathing symptoms as the week progresses because they may be exposed to something in their workplace that is triggering their asthma. And when they go on holiday or at the weekend, their symptoms tend to improve. So this is again something that may make you think that there's some kind of a breathing problem happening. If you're getting symptoms such as a wheeze, so this sound that goes like when you're trying to breathe out, if you're getting a cough, if your chest goes tight, or if it's related to, to one of the things that uh, I've mentioned before. Sometimes you need to wonder whether these things are caused by asthma or it's something else. But the key to the diagnosis of asthma is that these symptoms come and go. We call them variable. So basically, one day may not be as good as the other. You have good days, you have bad days. You have moments in the day when your breathing gets worse, your breathing gets better. So this is the hallmark of asthma. Now let me tell you a few other things. Generally, asthma is diagnosed in childhood, and many people, they may have had asthma as a child, or it's diagnosed when they are a young adult. So, you know, 20s, 30s maybe. It's quite rare to happen later, but it can happen in older individuals as well. So it's not something that's uh, reserved only for those of us who are younger. It can happen even when you are older to get asthma, but it's more common at young ages. Now, obviously there can be triggers for these breathing difficulties, and this is something that you may be aware of. So if you have a lot of allergies that you know of, this can be associated with asthma, or maybe you're exposed to something in your house, you're, you're dusting your house, you're exposed to the house dust that triggers your breathing symptoms. That may make you think that there may be asthma going on. Or certain times of the year, if there's high pollen counts outside, you may get some symptoms. Obviously, some things may make these situations worse. So if you're getting a cold, a chest infection, if you're smoking, if you're exposed to strong smells, if you you notice that when you're having these things, your symptoms, your breathing problems get a little bit worse, that could also be a sign of asthma. You may also have family history of asthma. So other family members may have had asthma. You may have had brothers, who, sisters, parents who have had asthma in the family. So that's something to be, keep in mind. There may also be other things that may be associated with asthma, other conditions. Here I would say maybe if you obviously have known allergies, if you have hay fever or rhinitis, if you have a runny nose all the time, if you're sneezing all the time, that can sometimes be associated with asthma as well. 
if you're having eczema, which is a skin disease where you, you have a skin condition, where you have these rashes that come on, that can also be allergic in nature and it can sometimes be associated with asthma. There's no necessarily a direct link, but it can be associated. Also, people who have a lot of acid reflux from their stomach moving up, that can also be linked to a higher incidence of asthma. So these are things that I'd like to just mention overall. It's a very common condition. If you develop ongoing breathing problems that don't seem to go away, you may be wheezing, you may, your chest may go tight, you may be coughing, this may be linked to some activities that you're doing, or it may come and go, it's variable, one day is not as good as the other. This should probably prompt you to get an opinion from your doctor. It doesn't mean that there's anything major going on, but just being on the safe side, your doctor may ask you a detailed history about how these symptoms came on, did it come on over time, slowly, did it suddenly come on? They may ask you about your occupation, about your allergies, about all these other things. They may run some tests for allergies. They may make you do some breathing tests that may demonstrate that there is an airflow obstruction that reverses when they give you an inhaler. So these things can play a role in the diagnosis of asthma. It's a very common condition, but it's a very complex condition at the same time. So if you think that you may be asthmatic, you probably should see a doctor, have a conversation and see what they say. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have other questions, do leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in future videos. All the best and good health.